Welcome to another episode of the Water Feature Maintenance Series. A lot of you guys might be wondering why you would clean your pondless water feature or fountainscape. What tools would you need during the process of cleaning? What are the benefits of cleaning this thing? How do you even know if you need to clean it? Today we are going to go over all of those things and we are going to show you how we clean our pondless water features and fountains. My name is Tristan Adams with Modern Design Aquascaping. We specialize in building fountains out of natural stone and wood. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow me because it's about to get real. First thing we are going to go over is all the tools that you are going to need to effectively complete this clean out process because there are going to be a couple things they might be optional such as like waders you guys will see the reason why I would say they're optional you don't have to have them but we're going to cover all the tools you're going to need so once you've got these things together you will be ready to complete your pondless water feature or fountainscape clean out let's get to it See, this is one of those recommended tools that you could have in your arsenal if you want. It's called a nick. Um, you know, it'll expedite the process a little bit, really not a ton, but uh, you know, you can, you can see what he's doing over there. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna skip out on this one for this clean out. <laughs> you had two hours to be eating on the way up here. You get here and now you're gonna eat your sunflower seeds. I ate on the way here too. Gosh, how do you stay skinny? pumps first. I want to stack the barrel to the max. To the max. To the max. Stack it to the gills, you okay? <laughs> Ow! Well, he's been bungeed, guys. Most important part of this process, safety classes. Safety first, people. You only get two good eyes. Some people, like me, only get one. Make sure you wear these things. Protect them. Got the hosel, pressure washers, gas, pumped, extension. I'm gonna let Nick wear the waders and do the pressure washing. He has a good tool to have sometimes. Because it's cold and it's gonna be nasty. All right, so we went over all the tools that we need. If you've got all of those things, you are ready to start your clean out. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to unplug our pump. And when we unplug our pumps, we're going to grub the large debris out. I say grubbing. I don't know when we created this term, but uh, we use the term grubbing for actually getting all the large debris, such as nuts, sticks, leaves, anything that can be picked up by hand, the solid material. We're going to get that stuff out of there after we get it turned off to get us ready for our pre-rinsing phase, which we will reach in just a moment. So now it's time to uh, turn off the pumps. and we're ready to get grubbing as soon as this thing drains out. Now that we've got everything grubbed, we've got all the large debris out of here, we're ready to do what I call the pre-rinsing phase. We actually, there's a ton of water down here in this reservoir, and even though we're here to clean this thing, most of that water is going to be clean and clear. Only the stuff in the bottom of the reservoir is gonna be where it's cloudy and anything you stir up. So instead of pumping all of this usable water out of here, we are gonna drop an extra pump into this hole and we're gonna have one pump pumping out with this one pumping water up to the top, which you will see in this upcoming section of the video. But there's a ton of sediment and stuff that builds up in each layer of the stream, every single pool that's in there. And a pressure wash doesn't get that out, and you would spend a thousand years trying to get that clean with just a hose. So we're gonna take the multiple hundreds of gallons of water that are in this reservoir down here and do a preliminary rinse before we even pressure wash so that we can get most of the dirt and sediment down into the reservoir and ready to be pumped out. And that'll also help you during your pressure washing phase. When you're pressure washing in there, that stuff is gonna be blowing all over you the whole time. You're gonna be covered head to toe in organic goodness. And what this pre-rinse is gonna do is get most of that stuff down into the reservoir so that when you're pressure washing, it minimizes the amount of organic scum that you are covered in. That is what's going on right now. So we're gonna get the pre-rinse done. Once we're done with that, we're on to pressure washing. Right now, phase two, game on. For the pre-rinsing, we're gonna need access to our pump vault. Um, you guys might know where your pump vaults live. 
Um, it's very different a lot of the time. A lot of people don't necessarily have a pondless waterfall vault from Aquascapes. Those things are absolutely amazing. That is what we use in all of our pondless water feature and fountainscape applications is the pondless waterfall vault. And that is going to be pretty easy for us to find. It's generally at the very bottom of your stream in a pondless waterfall. Somewhere in there is where you're going to find this. And we did a really good job on this stream of minimizing the area of gravel at the very bottom. So pretty much if you start digging in this little hole, you're going to end up hitting the vault. And that's what we're about to do right now is get that guy uncovered. This will not only give us access to our pump, it will give us access to the multiple hundreds of gallons of water that are in here for our pre-rinse. So. Oh, there's the top of it, guys. We have discovered our vault. That's pretty important to try not to get a bunch of rocks down in this thing, is if you have an aqua surge pump or a type of pump that has a defense mechanism on the front of it, it'll prevent rocks from getting in. But if you have a solid handling or high head pump, if you drop one of those little rocks in there, you might get this thing perfectly clean and looking beautiful and fire it up. And within a matter of a couple hours, it might decide to eat that rock and do permanent damage to your pump. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you got this thing drained out and you can see into the bottom of your vault that you don't have any of those rocks in there. If they fall out, you're gonna to have to probably stand close to on your head and get them out. All right, so now we've got our vault located. We dropped the pump down into the vault. That is giving us access to our water we're going to be rinsing with. And instead of putting our other pump that's pumping out in the very bottom, we're actually going up to the pool right above it so that all the stuff that gets washed down is pumping out of this pool before it contaminates our water in the bottom section. And we're gonna utilize as much of that stuff as we can to get as much sediment out as possible right off the bat. I'm gonna clear out all the way down to liner. So the reason we clear off all the way down to liner is because the lower you can get that pump, the less chance it's gonna have of pulling the water back into the bottom and taking the sediment down there. Not only that, but I can't express how much more difficult it is to get a pool clean. Like this little area right here, when you have four or five inches of water in there, it dilutes and sends the sediment. It's all suspended in the water and it is so difficult. But if you get down to where you have like one inch of water in there that's rinsing and pumping out, that is going to make your life so much easier. So I would highly recommend keeping as little water as you can in these pools while pumping out because that is gonna expedite your clean out tremendously. Alrighty, so now the pre-rinse is done. Believe it or not, we have majority of the sediment already removed from the entire stream itself. But the bottom part, the reservoir, those of you who have built ponds, who have cleaned these things, you know that that is where most of the stuff actually settles out, is in the bottom part of that reservoir. It catches in the top where the water is always filtering through, and it pulls through the little three by fives in the top. That's where most of the debris is gonna be. And then in the bottom section of that reservoir, as it settles out, you can see the pumps are already brown. They're nasty. It's, this thing hasn't been in here that long, but there is a ton of sediment that builds up in those places, and it is designed that way purposely. So imagine if all the sediment that builds up in that sediment chamber was actually in your stream instead. You would see all that nastiness building up in there, but it turns up, it goes down in here and settles out under the ground where you don't have to look at it. But something's gotta be done with it eventually. So now we're cleaning this thing. Now that we've got the pre-rinse done, we've got it grubbed, we are ready to do the pressure washing. And I will say it once again, please wear your safety glasses. There is a reason I put that in the tools section. It is about to get disgusting in this place. We're pressure washing all the algae and that biofilm that is on these rocks, everything, the stain. It's just all, it's gonna be all over the place and all over that guy in the waders. So if you are not wearing safety glasses, I'd say the odds are about 100% chance that you are going to get either a piece of algae, a piece of organic unknown substance, potentially a stick, or some of these stones, when you hit them with a pressure washer, it'll actually blast the surface layer off and it will be sending sandy rock shrapnel into your eye, your optical stems. You are going to have all kinds of things that are flying towards there. So please wear your safety glasses because this is the easiest part, but the nastiest part of this job. It's a preferential thing, whether you want to take or leave the moss. We love our moths. We are the ecosystem guys. I was born in a pond, for those of you who don't know. I might as well be an amphibious creature myself. We love the moss, but the underwater moss, a little different. 
it looks a little funny. It captures a lot of sediment. Honestly, all in all, it's kind of acting as an underwater filter by capturing those sediments, but we take it off. We pressure wash the moss that is under the water, the algae that is under the water, and we leave everything that is above and out of the water. So Nick is going back through right now because for some reason there is a ton of moss growing under the water at this place right now, and we want to get it out of there, get back to our clean-faced rocks that are beneath the surface of the water. So that's what he's doing is that second run through. done pressure washing, one thing you are going to want to make sure of, this organic stuff sticks like nobody's business when it dries. It is so hard. If you want to go through here with a little scrubby and scrub everything that has any of that on there, known to man, off, feel free. It's going to double your clean out time probably. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're done pressure washing is lightly hose rinse all of the things that have all of this pressure washy goo on them. And one of those is going to be my good pal Nick. He is going to be covered in this stuff. All the rocks, all the plants especially, because plants you can't really scrub. So yeah, you're going to want to make sure you lightly rinse everything off, including the stones, immediately after the pressure wash. Fortunately for us, it's a cold day. On hot days, that stuff dries really fast. You got a little on you, buddy. Now that we're done with the pressure wash, we freed up a bunch of extra stuff again. Little pieces of algae, little pieces of moss and stuff that were under the water. Those are all blown around again, so we just went around and picked up those chunks. And now it is time to become totally monotonous for the better part of this afternoon. And that is to do the final rinsing. The final rinsing takes a really long time, generally, because it's just all that sediment that is in there, it's tough to get out. And now you're using a hose. So if you didn't do your preliminary rinse, and you pumped all your water out of the reservoir, you're gonna be doing this entire process with just a hose and that is going to take you a lot longer. So you know we're the nature guys. I like to save as much water as we possibly can and reuse as much water as we possibly can because that is the most important resource on this beautiful planet that we live in. So we utilize that stuff as much as we can, but now we're onto the hose portion of this. So we're gonna be moving starting at the top. You always wanna start at the top of your waterfall because the last thing you want to do is get a nice clean pool down at the very bottom and then move up a pool and that water starts trickling back into your clean pool and you're right back where you started. So we're going to start at the top, work our way down, rinsing with the hose. As it goes down, it travels, it goes to the pump. The pump pumps out the nasty stuff and we are working our way towards clean. It is just a very slow process. Um, now that we're at the rinsing phases, you really need to know when to determine when this thing is clean. So even though you got all these different pools and you would assume that crystal clear water means that you are clean, that's not really the case. That would definitely be clean, but um, we shoot for 90% of all sediment, all debris gone. The reason we shoot for 90% is because you will spend more than twice the amount of time trying to get that last 10% that you will have getting the first 90. 90 is fine. So what you're really looking for is if you spray into one of these pools, it's gonna be slightly cloudy. There's gonna be just a little bit of debris in there, but it doesn't look like bottled water. If it looks like bottled water, that's fine, but it's going to take ages to get it to that state. So we shoot for just, you know, slightly cloudy when you're spraying full blast into there, and that's how you know you are good to go and ready to move on to your next pool. So you can see I'm blasting. This water is pretty clear coming out of the hose. The way that you can tell when you should probably stop utilizing this water is it is going to get absolutely filthy. The more you blast down through the top, the more it's going to be stirring up that water that's in the bottom and that accumulated sediment is no longer going to be resting in the bottom. It's gonna be suspended in the water and that's how you know you should probably pump it out. So I'm gonna pump with this as long as I can because it is a lot faster than a hose. So I'm gonna use as much as I possibly can until it turns to chocolate milk. All right, so now we have achieved our chocolate milk. We've got some nasty stuff in there. The three by fives that are on top 
are pretty clean. Everything's blasted out of them. They just need a quick hose rinse after we get this thing pumped out. And once again, we get onto another long step of this process. So we talked about all the sediment accumulating in the bottom of this reservoir. A lot of it's still gonna be there and you can't really rinse that until you've pumped it all the way out, unfortunately. So now that we've got everything clean except for the bottom of this reservoir, we're gonna pump it out and we can get to hose rinsing, which is gonna take about 56,000 years. So we've got the reservoir fully clean now, and I don't know if I'd mentioned it thus far, but I will mention it now. Same way you're gonna tell that your stream was clean, you know, you're blasting in there with the gravel and it's coming out pretty clear no matter where you blast with your hose, you know that it's clean. Same goes with the reservoir, but you've got this whole area that's filled with the gravel. It is all part of the reservoir. So if you've got your pump in the bottom of there pumping out water, you might have one spot where you blast with the hose and it's clean. But if you move over here, you might blast with your hose and it is absolutely filthy coming out the bottom end. So our definition of a clean reservoir is where you can put the hose anywhere in this bottom section that drains into the bottom and the water coming out is almost clear. That is exactly what we've got here. So no matter where we put the hose blasting water, we've rinsed all the sediment out of the bottom, 90%. At least I'd say we, we tackled more than that on this guy. But the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get in here, look inside of our vault and see if there's anything that could potentially cause harm to our pump, such as large debris, because it is way down in a hole and I'm pretty much gonna have to stand on my head to get the stuff out of there. But sticks, leaves, any of the stuff that made it pass down through the gravel and is now living where our pumps are supposed to be in a protected area. One of the biggest things that I see in these is when you take off the vault lid, to expose your pumps, a gravel or two falls in. And with these type of pumps, these aqua surges, that's really not that big of a deal if there's a gravel or two in there in terms of causing damage to the pump. But if you've got this thing completely full and there's a rock this big sitting in the bottom, you got two pumps in there. It is very, very, very disturbing when your pump, you go to put it in there and for some reason it's this much too tall. And you're trying to line it up with that fitting that's in there and it's falling over to the side and it's falling frontwards and backwards and you pretty much just want to take it and cut the cord and say you know what i think it's fine with just the pond working or just the fountain and not the the pondless waterfall because it is that aggravating and it's kind of hard to see down in there and to get the stuff out when it's completely full of water so when this thing is drained this is your best time to address any of these things that i've talked about so i can see that we've dropped a three by five in there during the course of the clean out i'm going to get down in there somehow and i'm going to pull that thing out of there so that my pumps go in nice and tight they line up perfectly and i don't have to worry about them sitting on something and it really irritating me because that is exactly what it will do it will uh, make for a bad day when that thing's full and you got to crawl down on there in your head with scuba gear and pull stuff out of it so I'm gonna get that thing cleaned out so they're ready for pumps, and then we will walk through the cleaning of the pumps and the impeller assemblies and all that stuff next. But I'm going scuba diving for now. Let's say, can you uh, go to the trailer and grab me some longer arms? <sighs> okay. All right. All right, so. Now that we've got our vaults clean and we are ready to actually put our pumps back in, we have to actually clean the pumps first. So you can see um, there's a little bit of mud on them from the mud I'm standing in, yes. But that being the sediment chamber where the pumps live, a lot of that stuff is slowly collecting on the pumps themselves. So they really need a good spray down and we're gonna go into the workings. This is just an aqua surge pump so it won't apply across the board, but you can see the difference right here. We've got one of the face plates taken off one already. We're gonna get that guy cleaned up. We're gonna come in here, unscrew this guy. There really shouldn't be a whole lot on him because having to go down through all of that gravel through the front of the boot or the, the vault itself is definitely not a whole lot that can get to them. But you're gonna wanna make sure, which I already have done, that your pumps are unplugged before you go sticking your hands in them. That's how you uh, lose the, the, the fingies. We don't want any of that. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna make sure everything is cleaned off you can literally see inside we have 
one lonely piece of mulch right here that is in the impeller assembly and they are spinning freely as can be. That is what you want. If these things are bound up or you can't spin them with your finger, you probably got either A, something lodged in there, or B, there was something lodged in there and it has caused damage inside the pump, which may or may not be repairable. That's a story for a different time. But once we know we've got these things good, I'm gonna take each one of these components, rinse them off, put them back together, put the pumps back in, we're ready to cover the vault back up and fill this thing. You have successfully completed your pondless waterfall clean out. So one of the last things I wanted to mention to you guys is the reason why we fill the entire thing while it is off. So yes, when it's halfway full, you can technically probably fire this thing up and have it running. But what happens is if you fill this reservoir all the way up while the waterfall is actually running, you've got all of this water in motion that's suspended in the stream. And if you unplug the pump, however many gallons of that is, is going to run out the feature down the hill because your reservoir is already full. So now that this thing is full, I'm ready to shut the hoses off and plug it in. Now we have covered how you can actually clean these things. So questions, yes, um, this is definitely something that you guys could tackle yourself as a homeowner, as a contractor. This is something that can be done pretty much by anyone. And uh, you guys now have the materials that you need to do that. You have the tools in the link that we had in the beginning. You know what it takes and everything that goes into this. So if you follow this thing every step of the way, yes, you can clean out your water feature. A lot of the benefits to cleaning these things is not only are you prolonging the life of your pump, it's looking better all the time by not having the sediment in there. But when you have that heavy sediment load, even though everything looks great, you are contributing heavy to some algae growth because plants love sediment and that's exactly what's in there is a lot of healthy nice nutritional value stuff for plants to grow and that's what algae is so by getting all this sediment and stuff cleaned out yep your pump's doing better you're gonna have less algae in there you got nothing to worry about for the rest of the year pretty much because you know that that thing is clean and ready to enjoy for the rest of the season and that's what these things are about guys that is what these water features are for or to bring peace and relaxation you can do whatever you want next to these things it is a great time so i hope you all have enjoyed this video comment down in the comment section if you guys have any other questions questions outside of the stuff that we've went over today, feel free to ask us. I would be happy to answer anything and help with whatever we can. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it because I know I have. And uh, I guess that's it. It's all that in a bag of potato chips. So I'm out. See you guys.